Um, I am very excited to uh, present our next talk for this evening. Um, a very interesting talk, as you can tell. Um, <laughs> this project was conceived uh, in our local uh, Tel Aviv um, hacker slash makerspace, uh, together with the Shinkal College um, in Tel Aviv. So I will pass on the microphone now to Denise Akera. Yeah, hi. And uh, Yair Rashef and Zalma Sekafero, please give them a big uh, round of applause for this talk. Um, hi everyone, um, my name is Denisa and I'll try to introduce what's going to happen here. We'll have something of a cooking show or a live demo and we will switch between the presentation explaining what electrolickables, we changed the name as you noticed, are and between what the guys will do here, basically they'll try to make this candy slife and I'm very curious how it will go. So, what is the open source hardware for smart candies and how we connected all these funny uses of uh, candies, which is about Kant, Bitcoin, and you will see Internet of Candies. So the way we will um, continue, I'll introduce first something about us, why we are doing this, then I'll explain what will happen during the live demo, and then I'll explain why we are doing it. So in the first part, what's going to happen here uh, Zohar is creating uh, a mold for the candy. That means uh, it's preparing the shape of the candy. So during the workshops, we usually let people make their own molds and decide on the shape of their candies. But here we will use a few of our latest experiments, which is the Bitcoin um, mold, basically, and uh, Immanuel Kant's hat. And we'll explain why. Do you want to say something about the mold? Yeah, we are basically we are using like a acetic silicone which is like a acetic acid and not acetone, like usually people uh, have this mistake. And it's like a actually food grade, you can cook food in it. So we mix the acetic silicone with corn flour, corn starch, you know, uh, as you know it at your country. So uh, for first, I've put like the corn starch on this uh, Ball. I, I can <laughs> see the cameras are over here, you know. Okay, anyway, it's, I'm putting some cold starch uh, inside the bowl, and then I take out the silicone just on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so a... Yeah, we got like 10 minutes of like work time actually, so uh, I'll put like some uh, gloves, where, where are the gloves? I, I think there was some interesting thing about the silicon, you said that people should use not the common one, but some, some cheaper is, one. Yeah, this is the cheapest one, when you go to a con, to a bar or so any store, you just tell them, I want the one that smells like vinegar. Yeah, it, it's like 100% 100, 100 uh, silicon and acetic acid. Oh shit, okay. Okay, while he's preparing the mold, I'll tell you something about us and why we're obsessing over it. So first I'll introduce you here. He's actually the real, what can, and I call him like a candy fanatic. Um, and what you're seeing in the background is his collection of Japanese candies. He has this uh, uh, guy from Japan who sends him uh, a curated um, Ex uh, like uh, curated candies every month, <coughs> and then he shows these are like the leftovers from the candies, basically. And this is an example of such like Japanese candy that probably inspired the year in uh, in in this um, effort. Then there is Zohar, who is just making the mold yeah. now, and uh, Zohar is really interested, and he works a lot with flexible circuits. So you'll see some interesting things about the circuits inside these candies that are based on these experiments with different like flexible materials. And what I can say about Zohar, he's a real connoisseur and a very good cook. So it's interesting that he's making the candies. Yeah. 
Actually, this uh, silicone has got, got this like steam of uh, acid, uh, like acidic, uh, like acetic acid. So you get, yeah, get some. I, I it's kind it. of smelly, you know, but it's uh, going away after a few days. <laughs> so I'm <coughs> kind of choking in here, <coughs> but it's okay. I'm used to it. Okay. Um, so something about me, I'm the <coughs> real sugar of hope in this group. I hate sugar. I believe in all the conspiracies around sugar, that it causes cancer, uh, that it's horrible. Um, and I'm, I'm a bit terrified of this. And um, <laughs> a place where you would normally find me would be the pies with jars. So, uh, if I can ask to switch to the presentation for a moment, because this is fascinating. Yes, that's me. And my favorite activity, which is wild fermentation. So, I'm interested in, I'm, I do these hunts for wild lactic bacteria. Lately, it was in carob trees this summer. So, I experiment with healthy stuff normally. I'll explain how I got in contact with them. So, uh, this is the kitchen and the hardware studio where all this miracle of smart candy happens. These are the ingredients, these are some of the components. And this is how it usually looks like. It's very messy, as you can see. This is just uh, one of the workshops in our place. This was the summer in Slovenia at the PIF camp. This is the usual atmosphere, people soldering, making the candy. Yeah, flat. And then maybe this is the interesting thing. Zohar actually made a fanzine uh, related to smart candies where you can read how to make them and absorb the whole culture around it. Do you want to say something about the uh, fanzine? Uh, actually, it's uh, like uh, instructions for the, the kids of the workshop, you know, so... Uh, it's like we're step by step, like uh, instruction, and uh, a little bit more, mm -hmm. you can say. Yeah, what's okay. interesting <laughs> about these fans, the fan signs, the Zohar does all the culture of fan signs a bit low tech, and uh, one of his ideas is uh, not to tell everything. The fan signs uh, have a special bond with, uh, with the player that uh, uses them, okay, so I'm and doing uh, the now, it stops so. you, okay. it uh, even abstracts you from, from doing the things, so you get it to work. And we have a good ratio. Yesterday we had an amazing workshop. Maybe we need the camera now. Something interesting is happening on the table. Yeah, He's I'm actually making the model. In, uh, I'm actually making the shape of this mold. So we printed like uh, Bitcoin and like uh, Immanuel Kant's like, uh, head. So now I'm just tucking it inside the silicone, you know, and like push it like good around it. So the, the Bitcoin is uh, made with so. uh, open scud, I think? Uh, uh, no, actually fuse. Because it's fusion. Fusion, okay. fusion. And yeah. then uh, printed and basically you can take any object and uh, do what works. Yeah. Okay, I'll switch back to the presentation and explain a bit the process. So what will happen after, after the molds? Um, so, after you make a mold, and actually this is the second part, because the more important part is the soldering part. Yeah. And I think you will show more about the process and the components that you use in, in the different circuits and explain there are three or four interesting circuits here. Actually, yeah? it's a uh, part of it, a uh, part of the circuit is uh, involved with uh, soldering, but uh, the other part, it's like kind of uh, conductive stickers and all of uh, like flexible uh, conductive materials. So it's not all uh, about uh, soldering. So okay, can, uh, experiments with flexible circuits and materials, conductive, flexible conductive materials. And this is like some images of that process. Then comes the critical moment where we are still struggling which is the cooking of the corn syrup. It's kind of a <laughs> very violent chemical reaction, I have to say, watching it. And then comes the most interesting part, is where you really cast the circuits the into the candy, and then you have the candy, the smart candy. And what you do after, you test the circuits and you taste it. So what is happening now, 
Um, I'm just cleaning a little bit, so... Yeah. And I'm so moving in to the electronics now, so... So in the next stage, what will okay. happen on the live demo is they'll start cooking the corn syrup. Yair will cook the corn syrup and prepare the material for casting the circuits, while Zohar will prepare some of the circuits. Am I right? Yes. Yeah, this, this uh, basically. I'm starting to work on the sugar syrup. Uh, it's basically, uh, uh, that's the instructions. Uh, in grams, <laughs> 270 gram, uh, grams of sugar, 130 grams of syrup, and 90 grams, milligrams of uh, water. Uh, the syrup uh, is used to uh, stop the sugar from crystallizing. It's uh, an inhibitor. Okay, so this, this is going to stay here, and we have the sugar. Now I'm going to take my pot. And I'm gonna pour 90. Wait with this. this is I'm gonna pour so 90 good. milliliters. Two to turn. I'm gonna prepare myself for the soldering yeah. stuff. Today we we didn't have a good sugar day. You have sugar days, and yesterday was a great sugar day. Today we completely messed up. Oh. So <coughs> wish me luck. Something that. Uh, uh, where is the uh, Chinese? Okay, so the best thing to. Um, uh, Used for sugar. One, one, one. Steering okay. is uh, uh, this guy. And now I need to start adding the sugar. Now I'm waiting for the solution to get a bit hot. We're using an inductive, uh, inductive plate. Uh, very good uh, source of uh, heat. <laughs> okay, so if I would just leave this uh, thing, uh, it will just uh, become caramel and uh, when I add the, the glucose, the corn syrup, it will stop this process. Denisa, back to you. Okay, do you want to say something now about the circuits or in a minute? Sorry, this is the fun time. Okay, so the whole thing from what I see about the cooking the corn syrup is to avoid caramelization. So you really have to be careful with the temperature and follow it exactly. I prepared something on why we are doing it, or I try to observe why they're doing and I'll explain my interest in these cookies. First of all, the smart candies or these electro-edible, electro-lickable, um, I don't think they're another gustatory technology and interface. So we are not really interested, or I think Zohar a bit is, but uh, I don't, I'm not, into this multimodal synesthetic experience of using your tongue in a new way and I don't know tricking your tongue to experience I taste into, which is into not there. I'm checking it actually into okay, checking okay, how okay, it, you can. Is it you know. So I don't <laughs> think this is another digital <laughs> lollipop that tries to trick you to heal you from your, your addictions or I don't know give you like a cheap food that you can eat with soylent and so on. So what, what I think it is, it, con it is a continuation of an experiment that we were told that happened here last year. So we really like these edible soft robotics experiments that Carrie loved it. So it's a bit in that way. And this is something I need uh, some help from your side. I think it's basically a hardware fetishist well, lollipops. It's something about, uh, we love circuits and we want to lick them. And it's... <laughs> <laughs> okay, and um, it's part of a project that Zohar and, and Yair are doing for a long time and it's called Idiots. Yeah, Can you idiots, tell us something IO. about the idiots? Ah, the IoT? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or uh, the lab itself. Idiots, whatever it is. Uh, actually, it's because it started like uh, four years ago with like this uh, IoT uh, for idiots. Uh, yeah, box, you see the you know, It was like this workshop about like uh, startup, you know, IoT startup and stuff, and we had to make like a platform for for people that doesn't know anything. So we made this box that you can connect one sensor and control the the like uh, control it by a smart uh, phone application and control like uh, by natural uh, natural language. 
like control if I get like uh, I pass the threshold, so light me up the the output of the the box. So we had, we had like AC and DC outputs, and you can connect one sensor as you like. Uh, it's all uh, very old news, mm -hmm. so it's not okay. relevant anymore. Okay, so we are over the idiots and now into this uh, sugar addiction. So I'll show another slide for a moment if I can get back the presentation. Yeah, I'm starting Thanks. with the PCB of the, the okay. candy. Okay, you want to show something from you now? Or can I continue, Zohar? Um, uh, okay. You, if you like to continue, I have something. Can, yeah. Finally, why I'm hanging out as a sugarophobe with uh, these candy addicts here. Basically, for me, uh, these lollipops are something of a philosophical prop. I'm looking into how philosophy can use prototypes, and I'm thinking, can leaking basically teach you philosophy? And my, my idea is that it can, basically. That maybe by leaking, we can leak a concept. So I, I picked up Kant, because he is part of this long tradition between empiricism <laughs> and rationalism and these discussions in European uh, philosophy about enjoyment and cognition. <clears throat> So this relation between um, rationality and senses. So I think the lollipop by licking it and seeing the circuit inside and seeing how it works and seeing like the connection between electricity and your senses, you can achieve something that Kant was trying to say with this uh, principle that uh, basically reason without senses is empty, but senses without reason are blind, basically. So. I actually, that, that figure of Kant in, in this project is something I asked them to do for me. And I'm, I believe with this lollipop in the form of Kant's head, we can change the bad reputation of tasting and licking. In philosophy, they're considered appetitive, low senses. They're beastly, inferior, in need of control. And they're basically enemy of philosophy. So um, I think these lollipops can reveal the conditions of possibility of our senses. It's something that doesn't satisfy your hang hanger, hunger. It keeps you uncertain if it nourishes you or poisons you. It strips you into this like circuit, basically, and reveals the possibility of all your experiences which is your physiology, but also this electricity that goes be behind it. So, we have something happening on the table. I'll ask the camera to show something. Okay, so you can start seeing that the bubbles are getting uh, slower. That means the, the water is evaporating very fast now. The glucose is just uh, trying to catch up with the sugar. And uh, at, at 146 degrees, we have to uh, shut this thing down for two minutes and let it cool, and then we'll add the, uh, the water, the, the taste, if we want to. So ideally, you have to have uh, the circuits prepared, so you can just pour this disgusting yeah. mass disgusting. of sugar over it. But uh, here we will cheat it a bit while Zohar is soldering and making such circuit. Can yeah. we move here, here or you yeah, want? Yeah. Show it. So, um, here, what type of circuit are you preparing here? I am making the, uh, basically the, the circuits, it's, it's based on the lycometer circuit. It's uh, been used like in uh, uh, rats labs. And, uh, yeah, it's a uh, behavioral like re research. Yeah. It's so one of these basic. It's, a, it's a very simple, like a re resistive touch uh, circuit that in, uh, consists like from uh, your finger or your tongue and your hand, you know, your body. And uh, one uh, MOSFET transistor and uh, LED for output or some other stuff and battery. So it's completely like a We've been using this circuit. circuit. We've been using this circuit for the last uh, four years in most of our uh, work. Uh, we can really milk this guy out. It's usually yeah. used in uh, psychological like behaviorist uh, uh, experiments uh, with the mice, if like they go away uh, at the end of the end of the, the that's our, basically our way to communicate with animals in uh, psychological like experiments. Like one neuron uh, 
Okay, and so for getting ready for pouring the sugar. Where uh, are the circuits you want to use? So we're gonna use uh, we're gonna use pre-made uh, circuits. Zohar, can you uh, use? Maybe. Yeah, oh, Zohar can radio continue. Radio? No, we're, we're, we're at 136. The rise okay. is, is very high now. Uh, there ah, was a lot, like 120, quick. it just uh, catches on you. Uh, if, I, if I don't get it on time, it will caramelize time, and stuff will get really messy. 146, 142. Actually, we have here like uh, prepared it. ones. So we'll take out. Okay, now the... Now you can see I, uh, I, it's taking like 10 minutes to get uh, dry. Like for the mold, as you see now, you can easily take it out. And it's pretty fine mold, you know, very cheap DIY mold, which is actually not FDA food grade, but you know, you can... Uh, Fuck FDA. <laughs> hey, look, we have uh, Yeah, we don't uh, care about it, you know, it's not uh, going to be like a shelf product soon or in the medical industry or something like that. Actually, I made it a bit uh, thin, so I have like a hole in the nose. But I guess it'll be, it will be fine. You, you messed up my philosopher. Yeah, I punch his nose. <laughs> <laughs> so now the, the bubbles are getting out of the ooze. We're not putting the, 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 the flavors yeah. before this thing uh, cools down to 120. Uh, then you can start mixing them. Actually, we don't usually mix uh, colors. It's just nice and uh, has a golden thing going on just as well, but it doesn't taste as well. Yeah, I just want to solder some. Okay, so now I'm just pouring head. some uh, drops. This guy is uh, watermelon, our favorite. And but uh, wait a second before you put it in the mold. Now, because of the, the temperature difference, it, it gathers a bit more uh, air inside. I guess you also have to wait till the bubbles settle a bit, yeah? You don't uh -huh. want too many bubbles yeah, yeah. in the candy. Is it? Or how do you deal yeah, with the bubbles? So, uh, the bubbles will just go away very quickly. Uh, this is not something you need to vacuum to get them out. They just like uh, uh, do their thing. Um, but it's really, it's, it's every sugar day is a different day. Some days it's just... Everything where it goes wrong, it depends on the humidity, and uh, you even have to calibrate your, your temperature probe. Like, mm -hmm. uh, it depends on where you are. When we bought war in PIF, it's uh, quite high, so it takes the water a uh, uh, different temperature to boil. Okay, I'll switch back to my stuff so because it seems like you're yeah, yeah. still doing something there. Yeah, I'm kind of. Uh, <laughs> I'll just. Uh, if I can ask for delay. the presentation for a few minutes. I'll sneak in. So this is the candy I'm interested in. It's the head of Kant, and you will see it. It's doing some interesting things. It teaches you disinterested pleasure. You are ah, <laughs> discovered demo, by your intellect. So you lick it, it and you demo. understand how something works. You see the contraption that triggers your senses. That's the ultimate count, actually. And you know, in order to get this hat, I had to go, I think it's the Boden Museum, it's this famous Berlin Museum, and I was actually scanning him in order to get this. Anyway, I think Kant was very wrong about his critiques. He was interested in pure reason and also in practical reason. But what he didn't write is something I believe sugar represents and also lately Bitcoin. It is this, this thing that drives all our addictions. It is basically the speculative reason and investment. And sugar, from which this candy is 98%, is basically just just that. It's something that uh, created the Don't slave trade. Anyway. It created the biggest demographic changes in the world. And I think we need basically a critique of the speculative reason. So it's also, sugar is an interesting example of post-scarcity. Basically from something that was a luxury product, it became a cheap addiction. So what is the new sugar? It's the Bitcoin. Okay, well, we're ready yeah. to pull. And uh, we are yeah. switching back, so they'll show what's going on here. Okay, the, the sugar is in a walking state. Uh, it's uh, very hot. In a, in a minute, we can actually even touch it and mold it, but currently it's very hot. And what we're going to do is we're going to pour it into the mold, 
Zohar uh, made the circuits and now we're going to pour this. A circuit which doesn't work at the moment, but we prepare in advance some um, yeah. that do work. So we need something to stop we should, the flow uh, bring him, uh, and they'll be back. Ah, there we are. Ooh, here they are. Okay, usually now when the circuits uh, work, the, this thing lights up. The, the circuits themselves uh, in a professional environment, they get up to 220 degrees usually in a reflow oven. So what we're doing here is not uh, up to this uh, spec, so it can, it can hold the, the circuits. Uh, we are going to show you now uh, completed circuits that we did uh, uh, 40 minutes ago. Um, and now we, we put them the outside to cool a bit. And uh, the thing is, you usually take them out when the when the we, when you can touch it with your hand, and it feels like the same uh, temperature. I think it's good. So let's see one that works. Take one like uh, which is uh, not thick. Okay, this guy is interesting. Yeah. This one we can we can show it. This one has a temperature probe inside and a microcontroller. And uh, you can actually change the temperature uh, it, and the addressable LED. It's and like a thermo to RGB. Yeah, it's a thermo candy. Thermo candy. Thermo so candy. this thing you can, uh, you can actually for use kids. for kids. <laughs> <Say. Yeah. laughs> but it's too hot now because the, uh, the sugar is still warm, so it's still red. Usually yeah. it should be green. We have to finish. So uh, we made all the thing like uh, one hour ago. So uh, okay, um, this is all. Uh, you can come and see some of the circuits, or if there are some questions, do we have minutes for that? Okay, this one works. <laughs> Okay. We can actually put so it uh, first of all, please we give a big round of applause to <laughs> Denise Avenzal for this monstrosity of a talk. Thank you. And we actually have some uh, few minutes left for questions if you have any for what's going on here. And we have, uh, we'll start from the internet. Okay. Um, the internet wants to know if you've tried to use the um, laboratory-like heating and storing plates to make the, uh, yeah, they call it the sugar mess. Uh, actually, we use like uh, this uh, induction stove because like induction uh, is like uh, special for uh, boiling stuff, you know, so it's very quick. It's taking like half, uh, half the time, but... Uh, we do yeah, it in yeah. all kinds of ways. We do, usually don't work with la laboratories. We don't have access uh, sometimes. Yeah, we actually invented it in, in, uh, in the, uh, the PIF camp, which is like uh, hacking, uh, you know, nature hacking, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, we, we only worked at night camp. because the wasps were furious during the day, so yeah. we walked in a tent. So <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it was like Question from uh, microphone number three. Uh, I'm curious what uh, program you're using for photogrammetry or 3D scanning to make your camp model. Oh yeah, we use a uh, reality capture, really good, uh, it's, a cons it's a professional, or, but they have a trial, go check it out. Yeah. Also, uh, OpenSCAD we like uh, very much, it's like very nice to, m to make like uh, gears or like uh, small parts. Yeah, another question from the internet. Yeah, the internet want to know if you use uh, lead-free soldering and what about like health concerns regarding the solder embedded in the candy? Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it might give you, um, you know, uh, not really major diarrhea, I don't know, you know. Uh, nobody died yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> Till now. Microphone no. number three. Uh, thanks for saying nobody died. Uh, can I get one of the candies? Uh, sure. Come uh, pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> and one last question, microphone number one. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the talk. I have actually two questions. Number one, uh, do you have a recipe also for fructose intolerant people? Mm. And yeah. question number two, uh, do you plan other philosophers? For example, Alan Watts. Ooh. Wow. Why Alan Watts? Like, I mean, I'm very Why curious. <laughs> okay. Why not Zoidberg? She is the philosopher, you know. We it needs to have something with sugar or senses. It has to have some, you know, <laughs> connection. 
but I'm all open to that. So next workshop. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay, so that's uh, all the time we have for this talk. Again, a big <laughs> round of applause. Bye.